digital wallets in this growing digital economy. What are they? How do they work? You're probably using one every day, but watch this video to find out more. Hello and welcome back to another video with Mind Money Masters. Today we're going to talk about digital wallets. I just recently posted a video on cryptocurrency trading and I thought that these correlate really well. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out right after this one. There will be a link for that video in our description. Also, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see whenever I post new videos. So in many circles, there has been a rising discussion surrounding digital currencies cryptocurrencies, and just general blockchain technology. One of these buzzwords tossed around more frequently has been digital wallet. I think it's safe to assume that the changing market environment is causing many people to give up physical forms of payment, i.e. cash or credit card, and moving to electronic forms of payment where you have a barcode and you can actually just electronically transfer without any touching, no, uh, no touch transaction. So over the next few slides, I really want to discuss the digital wallet in a little bit more detail. Now, for the purposes of this article, I discuss what they are, how they can be used, some pros and cons, and then a final wrap up around my personal opinion of the general technology uh, piece of this digital wallet. So first, I really want to share a quote with you as something really to think about. This is the quote, the future of money and your phone will coincide. The mobile wallet will become a reality. What do we think about that? So I guess, first of all, what is it? What is a digital wallet? A, and I mentioned on in the intro that you're probably using this or some form of this on a day-to-day -day basis. A digital wallet or e-wallet, electronic wallet, as it's sometimes called, can be a very useful tool. The digital wallet does not necessarily have to be only related to cryptocurrency, although that is a piece of it to store your cryptocurrency in a very safe area. A digital wallet is simply a software-based system that allows users to store payment information and passwords for numerous payment methods and websites. Uh, maybe not a digital wallet necessarily, but something that I use quite frequently is LastPass, and they store passwords and banking information in a digital format, and it's um, stored very uh, secretly and safely. So that's something that also is kind of what might fall into the same category as this. Uh, PayPal and Venmo have been around for quite some time, and they are considered digital wallets as well. You may also heard of Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. You know, an e-wallet is not only for making payments, though, or transfers. You can store personal information, identification cards, tickets, public transportation passes can also be stored in this wallet. Anything that you really want secured in almost like, I would use wallet almost synonymous with digital vault. It's like your own mini digital vault. Uh, digital wallet applications are downloadable uh, to a smart device, and they carry very high levels of encryption. You will create a username and a password, obviously, to keep the information safe, but when you need to pay for products or scan your ID, simply log into your wallet, and you have access to everything at once. You can also use this to access ATMs to get cash out. So there's some pros and cons associated with digital wallets, as you can imagine. Multiple advantages, multiple disadvantages. I've broken them down into these six categories, basically. Uh, there's there's definitely a positive in the digital wallet case, if it, in the sense of it offers relatively easy buying experience. So I'm sure you've seen either at the checkout or a drive through when the person in front of you hands over their phone to the cashier and they scan a barcode. It's very easy, contactless delivery process. And our society seems to be going more contactless given the nature of the recent pandemic, and also just in general, germs that they don't want to transfer the germs potentially. Also, many merchants offer a points system. So if you use the app as a payment vehicle, you can earn free merchandise or discounts simply by just using their per portal. Opposed to using cash, your debit card, I mean, your debit card may or credit card may earn you points, but not necessarily always the case. So doing this within their own individual merchant app is something that they encourage. So there's no physical exchange with a digital wallet. It's all based upon your application. So it's a much more secure way to pay for products or services. I mean, how many times have you lost or misplaced your wallet? There's literally no security on a physical wallet. Anybody can pick it up. I don't know if anyone has ever heard that story where, hey, does anybody lose a... Uh, 
a bunch of $20 bills wrapped in a rubber band, and then everybody, like, raises up their hand, and then the person, the comedian or the joke says, yeah, I found the rubber band, right? Well, same with a wallet. You know, if you got money in the wallet, it's easy just to, yeah, I found a wallet, but there was nothing in it. So understand that it's very less low security with just a physical wallet. So I'm sure you've also misplaced your phone, but you can also password protect your phone and have GPS locating technology. So ultimately, you can find your phone a little bit easier than your physical wallet. Now, I'm sure we all heard of hackers and technological criminals, and that is still a risk. However, that's a risk in any form or fashion. And, you know, th there are ways to enhance your physical security on your digital wallet. Nothing is 100% secure, though, unfortunately. In these times, you know, of this pandemic, obviously fears of general airborne illness, and many people prefer not to deal with cash or exchange physical cards. So they don't really know which way to go. So this is where enter a digital wallet can alleviate this concern. If you're just using your phone and most people don't hand out their phone to anyone else but themselves because they don't know where the other people have been. So you can just use your digital wallet and it's, again, contactless delivery. Also, in our society, it was originally based upon kind of a barter system and then moved to a cash system. So many people still use only cash. So this can potentially be an issue where it's not... When you exchange cash as a physical good, this could be a con for the digital wallet because now you're not really seeing the money leave your wallet. It's just you're just scanning. So that's something to think about when you're actually looking at the pros and cons here. If you like having the physical aspect of money being exchanged, that potentially could be a con. Or if you're not good at budgeting and you need that physical cash in order to budget well, it might be a challenge. However, I think the pros may outweigh the cons if you actually look at it. I know, you know, I know that you're thinking, you know, I mean, obviously I just mentioned advantages and disadvantages, but, you know, these are both right. Physical cash on your person can be stolen, but also, you know, you can lose your wallet, you can get robbed, you can get hacked. There are, there are many types of potential negatives associated with a wallet and a digital wallet. However, it's easier to use with the digital wallet and you can use it anywhere. Cards and cash are accepted pretty much everywhere as a means of exchange. However, you may need to transfer the specific cash into a different into a different currency. Whereas if you use the digital wallet, it may actually just transfer it and convert it for you immediately. And it may have everything and be able to pay for anything that you want. So the other piece that I want to bring up, though, is identity theft. Many people have been victims of identity theft and bank fraud. Now, these are all too real for some people. I know from personal experience, several of my family members have been through identity theft and bank fraud. So I understand that the concern of switching entirely to a digital wallet is scary. And we mentioned this a resistance to change is kind of like a, a big part of this. And Companies are working harder on higher levels of encryption for these financial transactions, but there are always risks associated. There are some wallets that have better encryption than others. I would encourage learning about the different levels of encryption prior to purchasing. Um, you know, for the sake of this article, I'm probably not going to go into different digital wallets, but that actually sounds like a really good additional post. And I may, um, may do a video on additional digital wallets and what I think might be the top five digital wallets. So that might be another video. Now, here's, you know, here's my final take on digital wallets. Um, adapting to change is hard. You know, it, it's obviously something that not everyone is able to do. And this would be a big change. This would be going from a card and cash society into a basically just a scan society. Um, and I, I get that. Technology is changing rapidly. And sometimes it seems impossible to keep up. But when I first considered digital wallet, it had more to do with keeping my cryptocurrency secure. And that's kind of where I delved into this understanding of what the digital wallet was. Cryptocurrency is obviously completely digital and you need a digital wallet to house it. And you want to make sure that it's secure. However, when I dug further, you can store everything in one spot. You know, again, there's concerns over cyber attacks, but physical forms of payment aren't going away anytime soon. And this does give an opportunity to better enhance security on the digital payments and the digital wallets to alleviate potential future concerns. So digital wallets and the e-wallet concept is still relatively new in the market. 
it's adapting to maybe some of the younger generation, but the older generations are still in the form of physical cash and physical cards. But, you know, I guess my personal perspective on this is I do kind of have a hybrid perspective on digital wallets. I use still, obviously, for convenience, both physical and electronic payment methods. But, you know, not because I have any overarching concerns over the electronic security, but because society has not fully accepted the digital payments. So I need to use both. But the business world is changing at the speed of technology. And in order to keep up, we must have to be, we must keep up to date with technology in order to be competitive. Um, you know, I do videos like this to help everyone gain business and financial education. Uh, I really hope you were able to get some good information on this article. One more thing to bring up, you know, I know I talk a lot about investing and finance a lot in my videos, and this video is designed to shed some additional light around this tool, this digital wallet tool that can be used for cryptocurrency storage. But for everyday business transactions, you know, it all relates. So I try to offer general financial education on my channel, and I believe that in order to have the freedom to invest and really take control of your finances, we should model our lives to some degree after the people who are incredibly successful. Now, did you know that the wealthy have seven streams of income, typically, if not more? Um, how many How many do you have? It's just kind of something to think about. And if you only have one, what happens if that one stream of income goes away? God forbid, but what happens if it does? You know, if you have an interest in developing a second, third, fourth, fifth stream of income, please check out the link in my description section. There is a video that I will show you exactly how to build a digital business from the ground up. Take a few minutes, check that out. There's a lot of great information. Also, please, again, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and comment in, in, the, uh, in the comment section. If something about it that you like, something that you maybe I could talk a little bit more about, I really like hearing from my listeners. So thank you so much again for watching. Cheers to your success.